everybody. Welcome back to HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com and here on my YouTube channel. And this is part two of our new Studio One version six, my favorite features video. Say that three times fast. If you have not seen part one, check the link in the description box below. There is a playlist for my Studio One version six features videos. They're all in one convenient playlist for you to consume. So go check that out in the description box below. We're going to talk about three more of my favorite features. This is probably the most significant upgrade I've seen in Studio One in quite some time, especially for guys like me who are into mixing and use the console a lot. There's a lot of little cool workflow features that I think you're really going to enjoy. And hopefully by the end of this little series of videos, you'll be able to answer the question for yourself. Should you upgrade to the new version six? I think you probably should but you'll have to see for yourself. That's why I'm here. Now, before we get started, I want you to make sure you go out to homerecordingmadeeasy.com because if you are new to Studio One version six, whether you're upgrading from an older version or whether this is the first time you're checking out any videos about Studio One because you just got Studio One, you're now on version six. That's the latest and greatest release and you need help getting up and running very quickly. I have three brand new training courses that released the day that Studio One version six got released. They were all recorded in Studio One version six. My pre is Studio One beginner's guide, mixing in Studio One version six, and recording in Studio One version six. Links will be in the description box below. Check those out. Those are the best way for you to get up and running in Studio One with no fuss and no muss, and it is all done in version six. So even if you're coming in from another version, an older version, these courses will help you tremendously. I absolutely guarantee it. So now let's get back in here into Studio One, into part two. So three things I wanna show you in part two here. Three little workflow things. First one is, if we come down over here to a track here in our console view, and we see our little panning slider. See these little panning sliders here where you have to grab it with your mouse and you have to drag it? You know, this is nice and it's easy, but you know, if you're working on a laptop and you have a small screen, um, and you like having your console view, the mixer open while you're working, this can be really, really tedious. I mean, I have a 27 inch screen and I always hated grabbing these little panning sliders and moving them to get them accurate. It's a real pain. Simple little workflow. Let's just pick one of these green tracks here. If I double click the panning, my mouse, look what happens, it blows up. And now I have a much easier way to grab this thing and to dial it in quickly and easily. I can't tell you how nice, you don't realize you need this thing until you have it. And then you go, wow, that's really great. And I, I really feel for the people working on laptops, 13 inch screens, 14 inch screens, anything you could do to blow things up to make it easier to use so you don't have to squint at the screen, this is really, really helpful. And it tells you on this particular track that we've highlighted, it's a mono track here. So there's only the word mono's up here at the top right-hand corner. If you come over to this purple track, here's a stereo track, we do the same thing. Let's double click on our panning here. Oops, there we go. And not only do we have the same thing as we had before, but now we have another little uh, thing here, little triangle here, little drop down menu, because it's a stereo track. If we click this, we can now choose the type of panning we want for this track. So balance is just the way it is with the mono track, left, right, center, easy. We also have dual, where you can now, you can set the left and the right panning differently. Where could this be handy? You'd say, where in the world would I use that? I would use this all the time. Overheads that were recorded, drum microphones, where the left signal is louder than the right signal, the way the drum, the way the microphones are placed. Room mics, another thing, the distance is different and the signal coming in on the left side is stronger than the right or vice versa or vice versa. Or stereo miking and acoustic guitar, same thing. The mic is us, the mics are set up and maybe you have one microphone that's much stronger than the other and you need to pan things a little differently. You can do that here in dual mode. This is kind of really, really nice. You can separate left and right. You can left click and drag up and down and it'll go together. You can do that. We also have binaural panning as well, which is really cool. I don't particularly use this much, but this, I know people use this where you can do this left and right, and then you also can change the width of it with this knob here. So that's kind of cool too. So there's three different ways you can work with the panning in Studio One version six that you could not do in version five. You'd have to use special plugins to do this. You can do this all right here. Again, super convenient and a nice little um, workflow enhancement, which I really like, really cool. Here's another great feature in Studio One six. This comes from 
another uh, popular DAW on the market. I think that I won't mention the name of. I think this is a kind of a tip, a tip, a tip of the hat to that, but this is really cool. I kid, PreSonus. Look at this little, I'll go to the purple track. Look at this little icon here, little circle icon. Left click on that, watch what happens. We have this brand new channel editor. If you've never used a channel editor like this before, and you haven't, if you've always been a Studio One user, I encourage you to try this. This is really cool. What this does is this blows up everything in a much larger way for you to see it. Again, this is great if you're working on a small screen and everything you need to know about that track that's selected is right here. So for example, we're on this overhead stereo track. We have the name of the track, the number of the track. We have our clip gain. We have our phase flip, mutes and solos, which are really good. Record and monitor. We have our fader, which is really nice. Our automation, which is really cool. We have our panning. Again, we can double click on our pan just like we talked about uh, before. Can we do that here? Can we do that here? Oh no, you can't make it bigger here? No, it's already large enough. So I guess you can't do that. But you have all your three different choices of panning here, but it is bigger than it is down here in the console view, inputs and outputs. You have our channel icons, which we'll talk about in a minute. But more importantly, you have all your inserts laid out here. You can see all the plugins that you have, any sense, any cue mixes. This is really cool. And if you click this little pin button at the top right hand corner and highlight it blue, and let's say you wanted to shuffle that over to one side of the screen, watch what happens when I select more different tracks inside of the console. The channel editor moves along with it. So this is very helpful that you could keep one window open, whether it's on the screen that one of your main screen, or maybe if you do have a dual monitor, you can send it over to the other screen and you have a blown up version of everything that's going on with that track. So you don't have to expand the mixer. You don't have to open and close the sidebar of it, of the, uh, of the console, like you did before. It's all done in the channel editor. I highly encourage you to try this. I've used this in the very distant past in another DAW and I used it all the time. I'm so glad to finally see this in Studio One version six. Very, very cool. You should check it out. I highly recommend it. Last thing I wanna show you, we just mentioned channel icons and you say, what is that? Let me show you. This is another popular request that people have, users have uh, sent to PreSonus via their website. They have a feature request page where you could submit your idea for future upgrades to Studio One. And I know this one has been asked for for a long time. Why? Because I know people over PreSonus and they've told me. And so if you click this little wrench in the, in the top left-hand corner of the console, you're going to get this little dialog box. And if you come down to channel components, you're going to see a new section called channel icons. We click that, we get a little window down here. And if we were to click left click in that channel icon window, we're going to have the ability now to put icons so we can quickly see what tracks we're working on without having to read the track name. Very convenient, a popular request. Some other DAWs have been doing this for years. It's about time it's in Studio One version six. I'm very happy to see it. It's broken down by category. So in this particular track, it's a set of overheads. We can click that. And now we have this here. And that's really, really cool. The only thing that I would say about this feature for the good folks over at PreSonus, maybe you could put it in Studio One version seven when that ends up coming out, who knows when. Can you give us some color icons and something that doesn't look like it's from 1981? <laughs> That's the only criticism I have. Or could we import our own channel icons if you if you felt so daring to do so? At the very least, make these look like real pictures. And I know it's a channel icon and this is an icon. How about a channel photo or an instrument photo or something like that? Make these look a little nicer. It really, Studio One version six as a whole looks modern and sleek and they've really made it look a little bit more sleek and modern than they did in version five and certainly more than version three and four. And this one, this, this kind of sets you back. It looks a little hokey pokey, but you know what? It's effective and it works. So you can do that. Now, when you open the channel editor, you'll see your channel icons here. How about that? Huh? How about that? Really cool, right? If you want to see your channel icons next to your tracks over here on the left-hand side, if you click this little wrench, you can do this here too. And now we have channel icons. And as you open up your tracks, you have your icons. Look at that. 
How cool is that? So again, if we could just get some better icons, some better pictures, I'd be happy. But you can do that. It's really nice, though, in a way, all kidding aside, I don't know that I would use it so much here because I can I can read the name. I have plenty of characters to read the name. And, and it, again, I, I probably wouldn't use this here uh, in the edits section here, but I would definitely use this down here in the console because sometimes the track names get a little too long or sometimes it's a little bit more difficult to read. Again, I think about our laptop users. This is a really handy feature. So check out the channel icons. I think you're going to like that. So we have three things in this video. We have our panning. We have our channel icons. We have our channel editor. All really cool features. Nice workflow enhancements in Studio One version six. So that's it for this video. Again, check the playlist in the description box below. I'll have a series of these short, quick to the point, new feature videos for you to check out. Please do so and give me the thumbs up, like, share, and subscribe. And also, once again, go to homerecordingmadeeasy.com. All the links will be in the description box below. If you are new to Studio One, and especially Studio One version six, check out the three new courses I just uploaded. I'm telling you, it is the fastest and the easiest way for you to learn Studio One in such a non-technical way. These courses are built for beginners. Anyone less than a year of experience, and especially people who are brand new, I hold your hand and walk you through all the most basic features and common functions on how to use Studio One, how to mix in Studio One, how to record in Studio One. There is no other product on the market that'll get you up and running faster in Studio One, especially in version six, I guarantee it. So make sure you check the links in the description box below. And until the next Studio One version six video, I've been Dave with HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com. Thank you so very much for watching me today, everybody. And I'll see you in the next video.